going on guys this is your girl miss melanie at flk studio shout out to flock shout out to divine this episode has been sponsored by flock studios make sure you check them out 333 west 206th street in washington heights the heart of dykeman bar tv brilliant and resilient As we proceed to give you what you need, we got Bar TV here, brilliant and resilient television with my special guest, Cortez. What's good? How are you, Cortez? I'm good, I'm good, I'm blessed. Thank you for coming. Thank you. All right, so I wanna get into Cortez as a person first. A lot of people know Cortez for his artistry, for yeah. his talent, and we're gonna talk about everything he has coming up. But as we all know, you start somewhere, right? Mm -hmm. We started from the bottom, Brooklyn. now we're here. So you start, where, where'd you start at? And tell me about your earlier years, younger years, childhood. I mean, Brooklyn, Bed-Stuy, Myrtle Ave. Like, okay. that's, that's, that's the hub right there. You right. know what I'm saying? Um, you know, I went to school all up and down from Fort Greene to Bushwick to, you know, Crown Heights to Williamsburg. Like, that section of Myrtle where we was at, it was just like, five, ten minutes from every other part of the borough. So, right. you know, I was just into a lot of things. I knew a lot of people. And, you know, from young, I was always rapping. So it was always me just being in the mix with certain blocks, certain people. And, you know, after that, you didn't get buzzing. So, you know, okay. but I was outside. So the thing about Brooklyn that I find so unique other than other boroughs is you can't just say I'm from Brooklyn. It's like Bed-Stuy Brooklyn, yeah. Sunset Park not, Brooklyn. Yeah. Like, it's like... Wow, the only borough in New York that is like that. Because you got to identify, like, from a certain hood, you know stereotypes. Or it's like, right. you know, or, or you got to know because Brooklyn is so big. It's like certain parts of Brooklyn don't get along with certain parts of Brooklyn. Certain and you won't be do. respected if exactly. you're from that so part. So it's like, oh, where you at? Oh, boom. Oh, you know this person is such a... Like, I can fuck with it, you. it goes like right. that. Yeah, it, or it no. definitely it Red definitely light, does. green light, one, two, three. <laughs> Big facts, big facts. Um, okay, so you started young rapping. What got you, like, the first time you rapped? What was it that did it for you? Uh, I used to just memorize a lot of music. Like, I knew all the lyrics to all the rap songs. So, from there, chilling on the block, you know, you, you smoking or you hanging out with your boys, and then dudes start freestyling. I would just flip the lines that I knew already and just crack little jokes and you know what I mean right. that's how usually it usually starts just like that like you cracking jokes on somebody so after a while I said you know what what I seen dudes uh rhyming in high school one day and I was like yo I'm gonna go home and write something and I wrote something and then I memorized it and then I would spit it all the time and dudes started fucking with it they was like yo that's all right mm -hmm. I said word once you get that spark oh really okay let me and then from there, it just became addictive. I would just jump in ciphers. I would work on bars and music. And writing and then, your own stuff. And then in 10th grade, my best friend, Shay, to this day, one of my best friends, too. Uh, he didn't know that I rapped, and I didn't know he made beats. His uncle was a musician from young, so his uncle had him making beats in, like, 4th, 5th grade. Mm. So he was like, you rap, I make beats, let's go to the studio in my crib and record so from young i had access to like a studio wow which is a huge thing yes and he would teach me bar structure now this is a bar oh. like this is a bar this is a hook because he knew how to make the arrangements with the beat so mm -hmm. i started writing in that format from super young i'll say like maybe like 15. wow nice do you remember the first time that you rapped professionally where they recognized you and you said, wow, I'm on the right track. Um, 
Yeah, I would say it, it definitely was uh like where it really felt like I is the pyramid. I used to record at the pyramid, uh Metro Supreme, and uh I go with my boy Billy the Kid, and there was like every Tuesdays it was an open mic there. And you pay ten dollars and you could just put yourself on the list. Mm -hmm. According to the list is where you perform. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? One song. Mm -hmm. And I went there and I did one song. Actually, the first time I went, I got kicked out. Me and my niggas was wildin'. We didn't even get to perform. So when we came back the next week, they was like, yo, y'all don't fuck it up tonight. Like, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. We try to have a good night. And we went on stage and my man Billy performed and I performed and we bodied it. And no mm -hmm. one ever heard my music outside of my hood, really, or unless you really knew me. Mm -hmm. So I was just like, oh, they jacking this. Mm -hmm. Oh, I we would go there every Tuesday after that. Then now every time I get a new record, boom, I go and try it out. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? So from there, it was just like, all right, yeah. Like I started getting respect. I started getting to know people. Like I said, I, we know a lot of the same people. Right. And I was very young. Like I was blessed to be in the right situations, mm -hmm. but I made sure I was in those situations too. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like I really went through every element or every step of what an artist does before they succeed. Like mm -hmm. you learned your business. Word, word. I definitely did. And you took it you took it you know, I'm, professionally you said this is gonna be something I'm gonna do as a word. Career. And I always looked at it that way. Right. I always looked at it as a business and I think that helped me too. Right. Because I always knew the right things to put myself in and certain things not to associate with. I was like, eh. But someone that's just a rapper, that they just like to freestyle all day, they'll just go to some bullshit, freestyle, you know, and, and do that. And certain times, you need to let them miss you. You don't need to be at everything. And just right. looking at it like that, it helped me, like, maneuver. Okay. You were able to filter yourself out properly. Mm -hmm. Now, let's talk about battle rapping, because I know that um, drill rapping has been a big talk lately, and it's been in the news. Mayor met with, um, you know, whoever he met with, mm -hmm. talked about it. How do you feel um, drill and battle rap differ? Like, um, actually, I think drill rapping is that. Like, right. I think it's like battling on a beat. When did it turn into drill? Because that's that's what I thought. I said I think this is battle is, rapping. Yeah, I I think more or less what they look at the drill is because of the 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 style, like how okay. they rapping. Like, it's a it's a certain way and a certain beats they're on. Right. So they they took that. You know that came from the UK. Then it went to Chicago. So it's just like. They calling it drill rap. Drill is a new term for like you putting in work. You right. know what I'm saying? So if you look at it like that, when dudes was battling, that's what dudes were saying anyway. Yo, right. I go to your block. Right. I go and that's do this. That's what I was da, da, da. saying because battle just, rap, you know, that brings me to my next question. Battle rapping being that kind of music where it is you against someone else battling. Mm -hmm. um, how do you as an artist and individual maintain your your lane where you're not turning it into violence physically. Like this guy is just battling me and said the most disrespectful things to me and did make me feel this way. How do I handle this um, without reacting and turning it into violence? Cause it seems like that's somewhere along the lines cause battle rap really didn't end up in a lot. I know people did fight here and there, mm -hmm. but it wasn't as bad as it is now where I think people are really killing each other over these lyrics that they're saying to each other and the lyrics is a form of expression that they're using for their you know whatever they wherever they come from so i get it you know I, my son was on here recently he said you know you can't fault what they know that's mm -hmm. what they're gonna rap about what they know yeah. what they're living through and experiencing but you obviously have got to a high level which we're gonna get on all the things he's done all his highlights but without ending up killing someone or, you know, so how did you do it? I, I will say this, though. There has been situations where it could have went that way, right. too. I just think that's life and that's just being a man, for say. I mean, mm -hmm. females do it, but the tension, like you're saying, right, mm -hmm. in the city right now and all these blocks and they want to get back and, and all this and all that shit is really what's been going on. It's just highly publicized now because of social media. And at the same time, that's it. They're rapping what they know. Mm -hmm. When they don't know, you know, there's going to be people that aren't blessed enough to see the rest of their life. And there's going to be people that's going to be blessed enough to see the end result and say, yo, that wasn't cool. We was wilding back then. Mm -hmm. It happens all the time. I just feel like me in the position I'm in, I'm in a cycle where I've seen it. 
lived through it, survived it, and I could tell a story about it. Mm -hmm. And that's all I try to do. That's what I try to reflect in my music, too. But uh, just game in general, like, you know, my son know a lot of these kids, too. And, you know, I see he's in the mix and stuff. So I just try to be knowledgeable of what's going on. And, and I don't fault certain things. Like, I understand it. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't want nobody. Nobody wants their kids in a certain situation where... Right where, you know, they got to fight for their life or anything like that. Mm -hmm. We all strive to be better. Right. But they, music is an expression at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. And they're going to express what they know. Right. Stop killing people for the for their freedom. It, ain't, their it ain't worth it. I'll it's tell you that. It's not, it. it's not worth it at all. Yeah. You know, that's crazy. the main thing. Yeah. Like, like um, you know, I said, I, I said it in a, in a verse one time. I said, you know, y'all fighting over, over blocks, over blocks in the hood. Uh, uh, bro, stop. The white man own that block. Like, you know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Like, you fighting over a block that the next man owns, bro. Like, right. it ain't worth it. Um, now, let, now you talked yeah. about your breakthrough. Now, you just mentioned being a father. So, I want you to tell me, were your parents, what is your family dynamic like? Well, were your parents supportive over you being an artist from the beginning? Well, um, my influences come from my parents. Okay. Uh, all the time, my my stepfather, he would play rock and roll, Beatles and seventies music. Mm -hmm. My mom's merengue, salsa. Mm -hmm. So from young, I just had wild range of like music that I liked, nice. um, music that I enjoyed or I understood. I would listen to Elton John, then I would go listen to Michael Jackson, then I would go listen to the Beatles, and then I would throw on some LL. Like mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Like it was it was it was a good mix Versatile. where I understood what quality what a music. quality sound was, a quality right. music was. So in the crib, I, I loved that. Mm -hmm. um, when I started rapping, my mother was just like, okay. You know what <laughs> I mean? Like She was like, okay. But she always knew I had my head on a swivel. Like, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? She always knew that I knew I was very sure of things. And when I say I'm going to do something, I'm going to do it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So she was just like, yo, you just got to have all your other shit in affairs. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I had a son young. That never stopped anything. I was always responsible. I always took care of my son. I was always a father. She seen that. She respected it more. She was okay. like, oh, okay. Even through all that, he still did what he had to do, and then he handled the music shit. So mm -hmm. she supported it. Nice. Shout out to your mom. Not everybody has supportive parents, especially when mm -hmm. you decide to be a rapper. Mm -hmm. It comes with a certain stigma, so that's dope. Now, I want to talk about... Meg, rest in peace, Meg. Rest in peace, the bro, Meg. Hold your own. Shout out to Sunset Park, Brooklyn. Mm -hmm. That's where I'm from. Um, let's let's talk about your history with Meg, because I know you wrote, you have that piece that I heard mm -hmm. that you dedicated to him. Yeah. What is the title? Um, that's Forever Meg. Forever Meg, right? That features a lot of artists too, like everyone that was associated with him. Like it's like a whole tribute record. Okay. So, you know, shout out everybody on there. Shout out Ace, he produced it. Ace always worked in the store with him. So it was like a real family record. We even debuted the video on the block and had the big projector on the wall. So, you know, my bro my bro deserved that, you know. Mm -hmm. But um, one of the most solid dudes I ever met, principles, morals, stood by some, held it down, had a real story. Mm -hmm. So I knew that when he was telling me certain things, it wasn't coming from what he thinks. It was coming from what he's done or been through. Mm -hmm. That shit hit different, right. you know, so... And he would teach me how to move in the industry. He was older, so he was telling me, yo, look, boom, while you in this position, you move like this. Right. Don't do this. Mm -hmm. Don't let him play with you this time. Mm -hmm. Nah, he was wildin'. Nah, chill. It's business. Like, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. and, and, and then I would start looking at it and just maturing and then start applying. And when you start applying the pieces like that and you see how the game is moving, you're like, oh, this works. Mm -hmm. And, you know. The game is not to be sold, it's to be told. Oh, right. oh, 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 the game is not to be told, it's to be sold. Right. But he didn't do that with me. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? He, he put me on, so mm. that's the boy. Nice. So rest in peace to him. Mm -hmm. Shout out to his family, his kids, his mm -hmm. sister. Um, yeah, so now that went pretty pretty good. I love that, tra that, that song. I Thank listened you. to it. It touched me. Uh, let's talk about your most viral um, video that you sent me. The um the TikTok yeah mm, that's that's the Hollahan battle uh, and that's on your TikTok uh nah not even it's that's just, not even it no just mind. went viral yeah. yeah 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 that's like uh what it is is it's it's a battle that I had ten years ago actually now I guess like, you and who it's this guy named Hollahan it was uh in Canada Toronto 
You were out first, there? Yeah. Ooh. They was, uh, that was their first big like battle rap event. At the time, battle rap was transitioning from just being on BET and like Smack online. A lot of people don't know World Star started with battle rap. Mm. That's kind of how I got my initial uh, uh, spark because I was always on World Star with the battles. Mm. And I had some of the best battles like in 2008, 2009, then 2010 comes and uh, it just exploded. Like Smack started everything, you know, it really mm -hmm. started becoming like its own lane and revenue stream. And we all started right. getting some good checks. So now they did this, the first big event outside of New York, outside of the country. And it was Toronto, Canada. Mm -hmm. I headlined that event. Wow, it was that's big. You don't now, say that, that lightly. He headlined it. That, was, that <laughs> yeah. was crazy. And then, um, it was a lot going on, like to not to break it down. If you watch the battle, a lot of people have, you know, but in the battle, I basically break down how he influences like drug use and stuff like that. And I made I flipped it on him crazy. His man passed away that overdosed. Oh. It all tied in. It went viral. But even to this day, like there's people at AA meetings that'll stop me and be like, yo, or drug me, drug anonymous and be like, yo, I saw that battle and I stopped doing drugs mm, like like you know what I mean like I stopped I stopped drinking because of that battle so like I was like damn mm -hmm. that 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 hit you know what I mean and right. it was still in battle form so somebody made a TikTok of it and that shit still hits like 10 10 years later like people think it's something new no. so you know when you strive to be an artist you got to make sure you put out some content that just seems like timeless if you could do that you're always gonna win mm -hmm. if at least you strive for you're not always gonna do that though Right. But you aim for that and you aim to try to make things timeless or make moments and that shit will keep a legacy going. You right. know what I'm saying? Now, you talk about the evolution of battle rap um, since you've been in how many years now? Almost 15. Almost 15. Mm -hmm. So talk about that transition because I'm sure when you're entering the, the industry at that time, there was no big checks or bags. Mm -hmm. And now where is it? Nah, it's, it's ridiculous now. Like... You're talking about you could get 10k or mm -hmm. you can get 50k for a battle right that's not betting that's and that's, that's as an independent half. battle rapper yeah, or do you half. have to be part of a league okay. let's break it down to the people here all right so the the, the main league is smack url right mm -hmm. smack url they was that was smack dvd now they have the url ultimate mm -hmm. rap league mm -hmm. they have a deal with caffeine that drake broke broke it with us a couple hundred million now caffeine is like a twitch is like a twitch uh uh app like mm. a it's an app so like twitch is a gamer app caffeine was a gamer app they wanted to compete and so what they did is they tagged up with url now they now caffeine streams battle rap every saturday it's like a tv show mm. so it's like you'll have three or four battles every two weeks so now all of us are are, are, are basically contracted now now there are other platforms before they got that it was just leagues mm -hmm. and we would be independently contracted i can be booked for smack on saturday and smack might have ten thousand for me and then next week i could go and battle on king of the dot and pick up another ten thousand mm -hmm. and have multiple battles now that it's starting to really expand mm -hmm. they're like nah we signing Exclusive. you for multiple right. deals or multiple battles. It, so it's re it's really in that in that stage now. Mm -hmm. Like I said yesterday, Remy Ma did an event, Chrome Twenty Three. Oh, they streamed yes. it through Hot Ninety Seven. Shout out to my guy so, Terrence Davis, is mm -hmm. the hairstyling genius. He'll be on Bar TV in two oh, weeks. Yes, uh, that's, I know him from like twenty years ago. So 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 even she she's in the mix and a lot of celebrities have been in the mix over the years mm -hmm. you know drake loves battle rap he threw a battle rap card um on his birthday mm -hmm. in la uh you know um I, I, there's so many people it, it, it's ridiculous mm -hmm. like you know but um it's really grown from barbershops and corners and right. i, I was a person that's what i'm saying it started on I mean. that and that's yeah. what i mean when i said earlier i say yo when you could say i've been through every phase i really was i mm -hmm. started on the corners rapping in front of the bodegas and stuff mm -hmm. i went to fight club i did grind time i was there when it first teamed with world star i did urls headline that very first event um they become the biggest battle rap league London has a battle rap league. I battled out there. Australia has a battle rap league. I battled in two countries out there. 
uh, Canada, all over, all over the United States. So it's like you built the catalog, but I've seen it grow from the corner to a studio to a small little bar lounge to a SOBs to a, a, a Webster Hall and then selling out like like the next thing is more like stand. And now arena, it's more like arena. Yeah, and we've done television too. So, mm -hmm. you know, so now it's just like, this is dope. You That's know what I mean? It. And, and I, the I'm, I'm glad now because I look at it like doing it for so long. You might be tired and, right. and I'm done, but now it's like, it's a second wind. Did you ever feel to the point where you thought you were gonna let it go and give up? Like I'm done. I reached every uh, every high I, you, I could reach. You go. You get. You get emotional with certain things because I'm. I'm still never settled. Right. Like people be like, "Yo, bro, you're the biggest Latino in the world in battle rap history," and I'm like, "That's not enough. I don't want them to just say the Latino one. Like right. I want them to be like, "Yo, that's the best nigga in the world." You right. know what I'm saying? So that. That, that drive, you need that passion. Right. So I won't say that I've ever felt like it, but you know, you feel that pressure. Right. You know, not everybody has a good day. I've had bad nights too. Mm -hmm. And those nights too, you know, you learn from it. Mm -hmm. And I'll be, I'll be tight, like I'll be <laughs> sick, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but at the same time, I, I, then after a while, I'll just process it, I'll learn from it, and I'll, you know what, I'm gonna show niggas, I'm gonna come back, you know right. what I mean? So, I'm in that little phase right now, really. Yeah. That's that's why I'm at with it. Well, that's good. And now you have transitioned into an actor. Talk about that. How did that even come about? And tell them the name of the movie. Um, the drummer's out right now. It's starring Danny Glover. Um, I got What's a nice your character? Uh, I'm just like a military soldier that um, they have like a like a clubhouse, mm -hmm. and. I'm rapping like the political views from the army and the system and George Bush administration. Like I'm doing that and I'm like the the one that they're watching and they're they're having a Danny's having a convo with another soldier about his uh his discharge from the army for something. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. The the moral of the story is Danny Glover's a vet and he's also a lawyer and he's fighting for the soldiers that are losing that are like getting uh discharged from the army mm -hmm. but the problems that they have is due to from their experience in the wars right you know a dude comes back from ptsd he ends up beating up his wife but he's really fucked up in the head from mm -hmm. ptsd and they and he's like that's fucked up y'all made him this way y'all put him back in society mm -hmm. it's a true story actually mm -hmm. i think it happened in like the mid-2000s mm -hmm. and he won and and they ended up changing some stuff within the military nice. for certain people to get certain uh evaluations and you know before you get sent back out and stuff right. so it's dope it's a nice little thing but it was a great learning experience more than how, anything. how did you did you say wake up one day and say i want to try acting or did someone get approach you with the opportunity um, yeah yeah that was that was definitely that uh my own girl mooney she works on sets and tv sets throughout the years and uh when when they were looking for the for the rapper for it she just suggesting me mm, okay nice. and then uh a couple of people on the set too were well, battle rap fans too mm -hmm. so they was like oh word you know cortez yo you know what tell them come you right. know what i mean and then i got there and i had to rap for danny at six in the morning i know he ain't know nice. what the fuck i'm rapping about he's <laughs> like all right he's like all right he can rap right. all right cool yeah fuck it certified you know rapper okay <laughs> but you know from there um like i said with the expansion of battle rap the expansion of battle rap media so i've been trying little things out with media and certain interviews and and uh just building a bigger passion for like content creation mm -hmm. and with that you need acting you need all that so right. it's like i'm you know my mind is my mind is in the right place on what's going to be the next thing mm -hmm. but uh acting has no shelf life either so right. it's like why would i close the door on that right you know what i mean good so now I know you have you know, you have some projects coming up, some some things. Let them know what else you have in store. Uh, Resolutions two is out now. Uh, Resolutions one is out now too. Um, my last two projects have really like elevated musically, and a lot of people, you know, they look at battle rappers. They say, "Oh, battle rappers can't make music." Right, because you still make your own mm -hmm. music. Yeah. But we also have our own fan bases now. Right. So. I've really been tapping in with the music and and like I said, I got some dope shit out. I had a joint with Meg on there too, like the last nice. the last joint we did together. And um, from there, it's just I I 
I'm motivated right now. So it's like I got album out. I'm going to drop a lot more projects this year. Um, you're just going to see my face. Like when right. you think of Cortez, I just want you to think 24-7 like he's grinding. Mm -hmm. You know? And, you know, there's some bigger announcements coming real soon. So we outside. Um, if you can name your top three favorite songs that you did for of your own, what would they be? For the fame. For the fame, for sure. From the bottom. And Digital Scale with Method Man. Okay. And now, from all your years of battle rapping, name, name at least two that really you felt like, damn, but you still won. Um, <laughs> Hit Me and Holla. Okay. Hit Me and Holla, definitely. Uh, that's, a, that's a classic. Um, and I would say another one would probably be... Uh, Probably, probably uh, the twerk battle, cause that was Webster Hall. That was too. That was sold out. That was kind of crazy. Just the, just the, the energy that day was kind of crazy. So, that was dope. Okay, let them know where to find you. But before I let you go, I'm gonna put you to a freestyle challenge. So you guys are gonna watch him rap so right now. Smoke some real quick. Real quick, and you gotta keep it clean like it's FM radio. For real? That's the challenge. Wow, they spun me right now. You know? <laughs> Cortez underscore Bodega tap in with me. You heard? Let's cook. Bar TV. Oh, we knows hustle. We was all muscle, ex cousin. Seen a hundred grand with the fam. Learn young, they don't love you. Thank God for the struggle. Thank God. It turned me to a man. On them cold nights, nice. under pole lights, get it your price. We was by the stove, right? Look, all we know is hustle. Thank God for the struggle. Thank God, it made me who I am. Yeah, rose from the hallway, grip in the stash box, trunk full of oil. My phone clicking all day, powder so pure for the nose, they adore me. Couple zones, get it for the low, you can call me. Always got it on me, I never lack. Hand on the Bible, this is court, so I'll never rap. Triple beam stands in that kitchen, had to measure that. Raised in the crack era, on guard, I never crack, never that. I remember rent due, rats, leaks, lights off, gas heat, trap suites, and windows with the bed sheets. Minimum wage. Inspired on my criminal ways Thank God I ain't bit in them state See they all stand tall till they sit in the cage And see their wife and kids visiting the prisoner's gate Damn, it could've been me Gripping on the 80 The streets was all crazy The struggles were made me